Last week we talked about uh, the gospel, specifically the gospel purpose and the gospel power. Remember we talked about that God is on a mission to redeem His creation for His glory. Uh, that's the purpose of the good news, that God is not going to leave His creation lost and fallen and broken, but that He is going to redeem and restore His creation. He does that through the gospel power, specifically through the person and work of Jesus Christ. We unpacked how we're saved from the the, the penalty of our sin, how we're saved from the power of our sin, and how one day we will be saved from the presence of sin completely as God continues this purpose of, of redemption. The question that we have is, is how does God intend to accomplish this? And I think it might be helpful for us to jump back to Genesis 1 to consider how God was planning to spread His glory through the world from the beginning. Right In Genesis 1 we have that familiar passage that says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Similarly, in Matthew 28, when Christ has established and accomplished his work of the gospel, to die on the cross, to pay for us and to rise again a new life, to begin this work of resurrection, of new life, of redemption. He meets with his followers and he gives them this charge in Matthew 28. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. God is recreating a new people who is spreading His glory over the face of the earth just as He had done and planned in Genesis 1. This way, it's through discipleship and making disciples. Watch this video and consider how God takes a human being and gives them a new identity. And with that new identity comes responsibilities and privileges. When Jesus commanded his followers to make disciples of all nations, he told them to baptize new believers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This was Jesus' way of establishing these disciples in their new identity. He knew that we would live differently if we realized who we are because of God's work in Jesus Christ. God did the same thing with Abram. Do you remember how God changed Abram's name to Abraham? which means father of many nations. He gave him this name, not after he had Isaac, but before. This is how God works. God declares something to be so, and it is. This is what is going on in baptism. We are baptized in the name of the Father because we are the family of God. We are deeply loved by the Father who sent his Son to die for us so that we might become his children. And we're called to love others so that they might come to know the love of the Father as well. We're also baptized in the name of the Son because we are servants of the King, sent to serve the least of these as He served us. As a result, those we serve as the hands and feet of Jesus in the world experience the kingdom of God breaking in through everyday servants, showing them what the kingdom of God looks like. And we are baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit because we, just like Jesus was, are God's Spirit-empowered missionaries sent to proclaim the good news of the gospel to the world so that others might come to know Jesus and in turn would also become disciples who make disciples of Jesus. This is how it works. Whatever God does to us, He also intends to do through us. As you wrap up your time together looking at these passages and talking through some of these ideas, consider the privileges that God has given you in your new identity, part of God's family. Consider the responsibilities that God has called you to. And as a group, consider together how you all might better enjoy those privileges, but encourage one another to fulfill those responsibilities 
that God has shaped through our new identity.